Tennessee, a 27 point favorite versus Virginia. That's according to DraftKings. And by the way, we'll have a big announcement of a partnership that we're going to have with a, a gambling website we're looking forward to. So this might be the last time you ever hear the word DraftKings on the show, but you're hearing it now. 27 point favorite against Virginia. What do you make of the opening line? What I make of it, quite honestly, right now is stay as far away from it as possible if you're a Tennessee fan. Because last year, this type, this team last year would have easily covered that. Virginia is the type of team where they're going to drop, they're going to drop 40, 50, and they may allow 20. And but either way, yeah, they, they would have easily covered this last year. This year, we've talked about how we don't know what to expect from Joe Milton. We don't know how the offense is going to change. Dave, you and I both talked about how they might do a little more ball control because of the running game and because of the questions about Joe Milton's accuracy. And also because Josh Heupel might just feel like he needs to have a few more time consuming drives. So you factor all those things in together, even though I think Tennessee is significantly better than Virginia, I, I, I stay away from this line. And if done to my head, I, I take Virginia to cover a 27 point spread. I would stay away from most opening lines because every team is different. Now I addressed this with somebody on the YouTube channel that uh, that, that South Carolina team that you think the Tennessee is going to be just beat them by a bajillion points. Well, I mean, that's true, but every team's different. Chemistry is different. And I'm just using that as a point. I don't want to get off on a South Carolina tangent for goodness sake, but every team is different. So I don't know that this team will have its strongest attribute, which was belief. And it was snap and clear mentality. That started with Butch Jones, but that is really how this team played last year. That's the first I heard the saying. They didn't get obsessed with a great play. They didn't get down over a bad play. I don't know that that mentality is going to be there. So I stay away from opening games in general. But as far as Virginia, they're hoping that a Monmouth transfer, his name's Tony Musket, comes in, and he's the starting quarterback, and there's no – set announcement on that yet but they have a bigger question at quarterback than tennessee so i'll go flip side if you made me gamble and i don't for a good reason because i enjoy the pools and the parties in vegas not the gambling and the gambling builds all that if you made me bet on this i would actually take tennessee to cover and cover pretty easily i also think that tennessee is going to want to make a statement with joe milton not that they're going to be even more aggressive than they are. But I think there's an opportunity to do that against this Virginia team. So I would go the opposite, but I would I would agree with you. I would stay away from most opening numbers. I would stay away from this number as well. Yeah, I, I, I agreed about most opening numbers. Some I actually am a little more convinced of. It just kind of depends because there's just teams that I'm higher on to start the year that – or that I'm lower on that not everybody else is. And so – for instance, I do believe the LSU Florida State line is out right now, and I don't care what that line is. I'm putting all, I'm putting it all on LSU. I'm going all in on LSU to cover. I don't care what they set the line at. Honestly, I that. no, I could see that because the line with Florida State's pub is going to be slanted towards Florida State by a couple, three, four points. I, th- I think that's going to be the case. I, I do like that point. I usually don't like opening games. So I love that. Yeah. Yeah, and I see it now. Yeah, LSU's favored by two. Man, put a bunch of money on. Guys, get get rich now. Put a bunch of money on LSU to cover that two-point spread in, in, on opening weekend. But, yeah, with te- two teams with Tennessee and Virginia, change, both have new quarterbacks. It's so hard to know what to expect. My gambling advice is don't touch that line. But, yeah, we're, Dave and I are on opposite sides. I I just think the I think the ball control that Heupel's going to try to implement and experiment with is going to slow them down a lot in the opener. Well, but that would be good news long-term because it means your defense isn't as tired and isn't as subject to being fatigued or injured later in the season. Getting back to Virginia, they've they've got a deep running back group. I think they'll be pretty good there. Uh, Receiver is going to be a big issue for them uh, because of, of losses from last year. And the secondary has to replace some monstrous holes to all ACC cornerbacks and Anthony Johnson and then Fentrell Cypress the second. Given that, have I talked you any more into perhaps 
Tennessee covering that they have secondary issues and might struggle to score with a Monmouth quarterback <laughs> and uh, a group of receivers that haven't proven anything at the college level. No, because what the secondary issues mean is the receivers are going to be bare and wide open, which I thought they were going to be anyway, because that's how this whole <laughs> offense runs. Fair. Now, the question the question becomes, the question was always, when they are wide open, is Joe Milton going to be able to hit them? And so we'll have to see how that goes. I, I would say, theoretically, yes, if it's Squirrel White, because again, <laughs> just, Squirrel White's the one receiver you can overthrow by 20 yards and he'll still catch it. <laughs> but I don't know about the rest of them. True. I And this tells you how different right now Tennessee's football program is than Virginia. So who is the running back that everybody talked about for uh, Tennessee in spring camp? It's a big, strong guy named Cam Selden, right? right? Okay. The guy they're talking about in Virginia is the preferred walk-on and his name, you might remember, his last name is Greasy. He is the grandson of Bob Greasy. So that's a classic Kirsten Biggers. He's not really going to play. But that just tells you how, how different the programs are. You've got a guy that could come in and be a superstar at Tennessee. And then you got Jack Greasy for Virginia. And I would be very surprised if he has a major impact this fall. And I... You know, that just gives you an idea. It is not to the level of Austin P, but it's more in that ballpark than uh, than you might think. Virginia's just not very good. Yeah, I don't know why. I, honestly, thinking of Tony Elliott, I like Tony Elliott. I don't know why he took that job. I, I, I'm one of those believers that if you're an offensive coordinator at a school like Clemson, you, you do what Kirby Smart did, don't you, Dave? You wait for the right job where you can get it. That's a really good job. Like, because you know an offer is going to come from somewhere better at some point uh caleb's a big gambler let's get to that right now uh you got a couple more lines now i'll tell you if i agree you've got florida texas a&m alabama and georgia are out so what do we got and i'll tell you if i agree who you take all right so early tennessee is a seven and a half point favorite over florida oh you mean for i sorry i I thought you meant the opening okay so tennessee yeah i was yeah oh no i like this better Okay. No, I like this better. I misunderstood you in the 415 production meeting we had this morning. Okay, so Tennessee is a what spread over Florida? Seven and a half. That's crazy. No, I wouldn't take that. You take Florida on the spread? All right. Yeah. Uh, I'm taking Tennessee. I'm taking Tennessee on the spread. I think they're going to do it. That's I think crazy. they're going to do it. All right, what else? Uh, A&M, Texas uh, A&M. Oh, oh, wait, before A&M, before A&M, I missed one. South Carolina's out. They are a 13-point favorite over South Carolina. Hey, now. I'm taking Tennessee in the 13. I'm with you. I'm taking Tennessee in the 13. Okay, so Texas A&M, they are eight and a half. Beating Texas A&M by eight and a half. Who does Tennessee have the week before? Caleb, can you remind me of that? Because you and I see this game. Don't they have South Carolina the week before? Yeah, so you and I see the A&M game a little bit differently. I tend to think that'll be uh, closer. Uh, I think after an emotional game the week before. So what do you say about A&M and the spread there? I think they fall out of bed and cover it. Come at me. That's crazy. All right, Tracy Morgan. All right, I've got uh, Tennessee winning, but they'll cover. All right, Alabama, spread on that. By the way, hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already. We greatly appreciate it. And the message board saying, I'm taking them all. Uh, Rocky Top Tom, though, says seven and a half over Florida in the swamp. He said, that's crazy. Yes. All right, Caleb, what else we got? All right, so here we go. Tennessee, Alabama. I might make some money off this now. Alabama's a nine and a half point favorite. I got Tennessee again. Hey, now. I think Tennessee keeps it keeps it close. I think Tennessee I keeps it close. Um, and, and I think that it – a lot of these numbers will change drastically and our opinions may change drastically after we see what Joe Milton brings to the table. But as of right now, if that game was tomorrow, I would take that. All right, so what else you got? Uh, before we get there, I would also just like to add for people questioning – in 2021, when Tennessee was a much worse program, they were within one score of Alabama in the fourth quarter at Alabama. That's the last time they were there. The time before that, 2019, 
that would have been a one score game had Jared Garitano not made that really epic, stupid decision to force the quarterback sneak and fumble. And then they return it the other way for a touchdown. But anyway, yeah, <laughs> All right, so the last one, and this is probably the most difficult one for me. Georgia is an eight point favorite over the balls. All right, people are going to get mad at me. I'm going to take Georgia to cover. I don't think Tennessee's at that level yet with the war daddies, the big guys. So you can get mad at me if you want, but at this point, things might change. I want to see Carson Beck, but I would take Tennessee at this point. Uh, I would take Georgia to not only win, but cover. Sorry, Mr. Jones. I'm going to take oh, And the message board tells me. Why don't you shut the hell up? All right, David, what do you <laughs> I'm sounding like the homer. I'm going to take Tennessee again because I think yeah. everybody's thinking, I think every, everybody's thinking Georgia is going to be all in on the Tennessee game. And so they're obviously not going to overlook it. Here's the flaw in that. It's late in the season. Dave, when you play a really easy schedule like Georgia does, you know, as well as I do, you start to let a lot of mistakes become a habit because you get away with it. Yep. And you do. Just saying. Yeah, you do. And I think that this Georgia team, it would surprise me if that they were complacent throughout the year like they were last year, wouldn't it? You don't get you don't have two years of those, do you? I mean, Alabama was like that a couple of years. And they ended up playing for a national title, and I just don't think unless Kirby Smart's lost complete discipline, which is a possibility, you can <laughs> rag them in the right now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's a real possibility, but surely this team comes to play every Saturday because they certainly. Uh, didn't last year. All right, uh, Jacob Warren, what should people do? What's up, everybody? This is Jacob Warren asking you to like, subscribe, and share. Dave needs this.